Many wells are affected by a well skin, a low permeability layer that surrounds the well and causes the drawdown in the skin to be less than or to be greater than the drawdown that would be expected otherwise. So we can see this in the, in the sketch. This line here is the expected drawdown using uh, the Jacob analysis or perhaps some other analysis. But as we get right in the vicinity of the well, we see that there's a low permeability zone here and the, the head goes like so, follows this dashed line. And as a result, this is the expected drawdown based on our theoretical analysis that is using the properties of the aquifer uh, out here away from the well, so out in, in this region. But in fact, we observe that the drawdown at the well is, is here. So the drawdown is greater. Um, and that results from the extra head loss due to the well skin. So we want to characterize this, and one way to characterize it is to use the well efficiency, which is the ratio of the expected drawdown from our theoretical analysis to the observed drawdown, what actually occurs in the field. So we need a way to calculate what the expected drawdown is, and we can do this with the Jacob analysis. What I'm showing here is a version of the Jacob analysis that's set up to calculate the head, or I guess this is the drawdown here, um, as a, at a particular time. So the important thing to recognize is right here. The radial distance that we're using here is the radius of the well. What we used in the previous analysis was the radial distance of the monitoring well where our data were made. In this case, we need to use the radial, the radius of the well itself. This time here, that's the time, the elapsed time for a data point that we're going to use to determine the observed drawdown. The calculation goes like so. We put in the observed time and the radius of the well, and everything else is pretty much the same, the S and the T, we've calculated using a monitoring well out here in the formation. The performance here of the monitoring well, the head in the monitoring well, is not affected by the skin. So when we calculate T and S from the monitoring well data, we're getting something that's really just affected by the um, formation properties. And there's the same T and this is Q which we already know. So we can go and calculate what this is. This gives us then an expected drawdown. We then take the ratio of that calculated value to the observed drawdown at that time. That gives us the well efficiency. Note also that it's possible under some circumstances for the well efficiency to be greater than one. In many cases, and the one that I'm showing here, there's a low permeability region around the well, and that often occurs as a result of drilling or perhaps bacterial fouling uh, during operation of the well. But it's possible that the well has a, a higher permeability region around it. Um, for example, here's our screen, and if the, if the well has been hydraulically fractured, for example, or if the well intersects a region that's higher permeability than the formation, then uh, the drawdown that's expected might be greater than the observed drawdown. So if this is a more permeable region, then we might have something that looks like this, that goes like that. And so the, the gradient here is less than what's expected. The specific capacity of a well is the pumping rate, Q, divided by the drawdown. So during a transient test, this is going to be constantly changing. If we hold the pumping rate constant, the drawdown will be increasing, and so this will be decreasing, this ratio. But if we have a shallow well and we pump it for a while, then the drawdown tends to stabilize and the well goes to steady state, in which case, the specific capacity reaches a constant value. And this is a very important value to know because for a, a reasonable range of drawdowns, 
In many cases, this constant or this this uh, specific capacity is constant. So if we know what it is, then we can tell what the drawdown will be for a specific pumping rate. And this is really probably the best way to characterize the performance of a well, at least if you're interested in how much rate you could get, how much water you could get to come out of this well. For a specific, if you know the specific capacity, then you can tell what the drawdown will be if you pump it at a certain rate. So for example, if there is a certain amount of drawdown that you can't exceed, that'll be the maximum drawdown that you could tolerate, then you could determine what the pumping rate would be when you reach that, or if you were to hold that, um, that drawdown to be constant. Okay, so for shallow wells, the way that they go to steady state is by interacting with the stream. And the way that you analyze this is to take a well over here. Let me back up a second. So this is what we're thinking is going on. Here's the well over here, this, this red circle. And we're pumping out. And there's a stream over here shown by this blue band. And when the well goes to steady state, it's interacting with that stream. And that interaction is what allows it to go to steady state. So to analyze this situation, the way that you do it is to use what's called an image well. So if we have a well here, and if we use just the Jacob analysis, and we're pumping out of this well, and we assume in the Jacob analysis that the aquifer is infinite. So it's of infinite lateral extent, and there is no boundary. But what we do then is we say, well, I'm going to put in another well. This is just an artificial well. It doesn't really exist, but I'm going to put it in there because if I, if I take that well and then I inject into it, and if I inject into it at a rate that's equal to the pumping rate that I'm doing over here, then this injection offsets the pumping over on the left side. And as a result, the zone, the, the, the line that's halfway between these two, has no drawdown. And so it's, it's the head along that line is maintained at a constant value. All right. And as a result, this uh, analysis is only valid for this region over here. It's not really valid over here because this pumping well doesn't really exist. So it's a way of taking a, a, a simple analysis for an infinite la aquifer and turning it into an analysis that will allow us to evaluate the effects of a constant head boundary that represents a stream. So that's what I'm showing here, that the, the drawdown will equal the actual drawdown from the pumping well plus the drawdown from this image well that's over here. Here's how you do it. This is the Jacob analysis that we've seen before. What we're going to need to do is to write this now in terms of x and y coordinates. So there's x and there's y and the origin of coordinates is at the uh, pumping well. So in order to do that, to make this switch, what we have to do is go in here and recognize that when we first did Jacob, we wrote it in terms of uh, radial distance away from the pumping well. That's because it was actually symmetric. And what we can do then is recognize that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem. So we just do that substitution and we get this version of the equation. So that's Jacob analysis right there. And we see this guy here. That's the, that's the substitution that we've done. So this is just the pumping well. And we can repeat this for the image well. And here's what it looks like. This is the image well. And we're going to be injecting instead of pumping out. So the sign changes right there. And the image well is is here. It's at x equals 2l. So l is the distance to the stream. And this distance here is 2l. So the way that we write this image well is to replace x here with x minus 2l. That's right there. That kind of slides this image well over here to the origin of coordinates. Otherwise, this is just the same as the pumping well. 
So the image well, with just two small changes, we can, we can determine what the drawdown is over here at the image well. And now what we do is add them together. So this is another superposition problem. We saw earlier that we did the analysis for recovery by superimposing two solutions from different times. Here we're superimposing two solutions from different locations. This is the pumping well, and this is the image well that we just drew out here. And what we see is that this term here can be factored out. And then we have log, log of this stuff here minus the log of this stuff there. And so we can combine those logs using the rule of logs. When we have log of A minus log of B, that equals the log of A divided by B. So we do that. We combine them, and we get this. Um, these terms, this stuff here, it's just going to cancel when we do this division, and we end up with the stuff that I'm showing here. Okay, so that's the total drawdown. This would give us the drawdown throughout this region here. All right, so let's go to the next page, and here's the thing that we just d developed. So what we do is say, well, we're really just interested in for this specific capacity calculation in what the drawdown is at the well. What we have here is x and y. So the solution that we have here is really valid over the whole aquifer. But if we just say that at the particular point we're interested in, we say that y is equal to 0. So that would be right here. Well, it would be right here and x equals rw. So that's going to be right at that point there. Um, and if we also assume that 2 times L is much, much greater than rw. So that, I think, makes sense. So 2L is, um, is, is 2 times the distance to the stream. And that's got to be much, much greater than the radius of the well. So that'll be okay. Unless the well is right next to the stream, this will be fine. And if we make those assumptions, then um, we're saying that r squared is, that's just equal to zero. And if we make, uh, we, we, th this guy here, this x is equal to rw. And that's rw. And that allows us to simplify this down to, to this. So pretty straightforward. And then the next step is to recognize if we take the log of this stuff squared, that the the two can come down, the two can come down there, and that'll cancel out with that guy and give us two there. Okay, so here's the result for the drawdown at that point on the well, and then to get specific capacity, we just take the Q over here. And this is 1 over the specific capacity, so we do 1 over all of this stuff. And we get this analysis here, or this formula in the yellow box. So this gives us a way to calculate the specific capacity at steady state, assuming that the aquifer is going to steady state by interacting with this stream. And it's really a pretty straightforward calculation. We've already calculated T, and we determine L. That's the distance to the nearest stream. So we'll presumably have a, a map of the site. The radius of the well, we'll know that from the well completion. And so we can do this analysis out and see what the steady state specific capacity is. And so what we're expecting is to have something, let's see, let's, let's take a look at the units. Well, this guy down here uh, is, it's a log, and so it has no units. And so this has units of the uh, transmissivity has units of length squared per time. So the specific capacity has units of length squared per time. That's the basic units. But if we think about it, Q over delta P, this is telling us the, the, the flow rate per unit of drawdown. So it's really the flow rate here, length cubed per time per unit of drawdown is a length 
So we can give the specific capacity uh, in units of length squared per time. That's, that's correct. But what you see is that in some cases, it's, also, it's given as length cubed per time, the volumetric flow rate per unit of drawdown. So specific capacity sometimes is given as like gallons per minute per foot of drawdown. Um, so even though you could go and, and reduce it down to this kind of unit, uh, because it's a, a flow rate per unit of drawdown, it's given as, uh, as units that, that support that concept.